Hey everyone, this video is a quick review of the new Casio FX99CW which is essentially a design update of the popular 991EX a scientific calculator aimed at high school and engineering students. With the CW, Casio have attempted to make the 991 a more approachable and easy to use device which preserves essentially the same functionality and they've made some fairly bold design decisions that I feel are fairly positive but they may polarize some people. The 991CW is the most advanced out of a series of CW calculators. There's the 570 which is identical but lacks the solar power. There's also the stripped down 350 that has a subset of functionality and the 82 which is the same as the 350 but with a longer battery life. So a lot of what I'll be talking about also applies to these other CW calculators. And the first thing you might notice about the CW is the circular convex buttons. I actually can't think of another scientific calculator made by another major manufacturer with all round buttons. If you can, uh, let me know in the comments. But one of the first videos I posted on this channel was about this Brown ET23, a basic four function calculator designed by the famous Dieter Rams uh, with his partner Dietrich Lubs in 1976 and of course Johnny Ive he really borrowed from the designs for these calculators in his iPhone calculator app and actually for me the round buttons on a calculator always made a lot of sense the lack of edges do make them feel nice and according to Casio the space between the keys on the CW reduces typing mistakes and the convex and rounded key faces make them easy to push evenly from any angle. But one of the ramifications of circular buttons is that it leaves less space for additional key labels and so Casio has cleaned up these quite a bit from the EX. There's now only one additional label beside each key uh, with many functions having been consolidated and moved into menus but the labels are a lot easier to read than on the EX and overall I like the new look. I do wonder uh, whether some of these small dashes beside each key that indicate the direction of the label are absolutely necessary. I think the keyboard would have looked even cleaner without those. The key placement on the CW has also been altered a lot from the EX and I'll talk through some of those changes later. Uh, the CW also has a slightly uh, different display from the EX. It's the same resolution uh, but it supports a higher contrast and it also supports four sh uh, shades of grey that's used in some subtle ways throughout the UI but overall it's not a dramatic difference from the EX display. And the CW has all the same apps as the EX, adding just one extra one uh, called Math, MathBox that simulates dice rolls and coin tosses. And there are other videos on YouTube that go through all these apps in detail. Uh, but again, the changes from the EX are really around the user interface. And one of the most controversial ones has to do with menu navigation because menus on the CW can only be navigated using these cursor keys. Whereas on the EX you can and actually sometimes you have to hit a number shortcut for a menu item. So on the EX uh, you can either use the cursor keys or just hit the number for an app uh, to switch. Uh, and this makes switching between apps really quickly. Uh, whereas on the, uh, on the CW uh, there's obviously a lot more keystrokes involved. Uh, but on the positive side, all the keys used for menu navigation are in this area of the keyboard. Uh, but with other menus, it's kind of easier to see the trade-off <clears throat> that Casio is making. So say we wanted to convert 50 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. Well, on the EX, we would type 50 and then shift 8 to um, go into the conversions menu. Now we uh, need to find the right menu item and so we need to use these up and down arrows to page through the menu and then use the number 1 uh, to select um, the option we want. Whereas on the uh, CW uh, we just hit catalog, use the cursor keys to find 
uh, the right uh, uh, menu item uh, and uh, perform the same operation. Uh, but So on the EX we are alternating again between different sections of the keyboard to navigate the menu and I'm generally not a fan of uh, numeric menu navigation on calculators. I think they can be a little bit confusing when you're switching back and forth between entering an equation and navigating menus using the same number keys and so I think Casio here have traded off speed of use uh, here for a cleaner design. Now the controversial change is Casio has amalgamated the functions from a bunch of different keys such as this engineering key, uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, uh, the fractions to decimals and the improper to mix fraction key all into the single format key. And to me this makes a lot of sense because all of those keys change how the current result is displayed. But what's really controversial is that the format key actually brings up a menu. And of course now we need to use the cursor keys uh, to select the option we want. Uh, and so the buttons on the bottom right of the calculator are the ones that we're expecting to be using very frequently and it's just odd to see a menu pop up uh, when you hit one. And it's interesting that if we go and switch to base end mode, uh, the format key here actually just toggles between uh, the different d bases. And so I'm not sure why Casio didn't do the same thing in the calculator app. As others have pointed out, Casio could have used uh, the shifted version of the format key for uh, to bring that menu up. Uh, and by the way, if we go back to calculate uh, and enter, say, a fractional value, you can actually just use uh, shift and exe to convert to uh, decimal format and hit exe to switch back again. And so I think most users won't end up using that format key much, which seems like a waste of prime key position, uh, which on cal Casio calculators is often occupied uh, by the answer key. And so they've moved that up above the keyboard, which as a long time Casio user takes some getting used to. Another change which may be less controversial and I think is really interesting is that Casio have done away with uh, the store and recall buttons. Um, so now there's a single uh, variable key where when you press it, it actually shows all um, the variables in memory along with their values and from here uh, you can either recall or store uh, into those variables. And I really like being able to see uh, all the variable state in one screen. Uh, I think it helps quite a bit if you forget where you've put a value. Uh, and you tend to use need to use variables a lot on the 991 because you can't go back and cherry pick values from the persistent calculation history. So again here, Casio have um, uh, sacrificed speed for uh, other goals and uh, they've also amalgamated uh, global functions um, definitions into a similar screen and collected the variable and function buttons together which to me makes a lot of sense. And so overall the 991CW is still a great calculator. Currently it's only being sold in some countries like India but most people are expecting it, it will be eventually rolled out worldwide and replace the EX. And overall it has the same strengths as the EX, it's support for exact answers in calculator mode, it's uh, support for 4x4 matrices and its equation solving capabilities are really great and it has a generally faster processor than its competitors which is even slightly faster on the CW. It also shares the same weaknesses uh, it has, still has the lack of ability to, to copy arbitrary values from the calculation history, like say with the TI-36X Pro. And also, it also still erases calculation history when you switch between apps or when the calculator auto powers off. Although now you can set the auto uh, time off to 60 minutes, which is helpful. 
But as I say, the CW really is a bold design move for Casio. The EX used button positions and user interface patterns that have been in Casio scientific calculators for decades. So this 4800p from 1989, for example, supports the same number-based menu navigation as the EX and a similar keyboard layout. So I like how Casio are trying new things with the CW. I do think it will be more approachable and easier to use than the EX for the majority of high school students. But there have been trade-offs made that won't please some power users. Uh, but being almost functionally identical, I don't think there's much reason for those users to update. But overall, I like the new circular buttons, uh, the concept of the unified number format toggle and the new variable and function management features and it'll be interesting to see to what extent those features persist in the future or get copied by other manufacturers. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.